Okay, we shall start our discussion because now it's uh, 8 p.m. Okay, today the topic of discussion is uh, on admission and confession. Okay, first and foremost, I just want to make some disclaimers here. I'm just a very junior lawyer and there is no guarantee as of the quality and also the accuracy of this teaching. And this teaching is uh, entirely just serve as a guide for you. This is not suitable to be your academical reference. So you still have to counter check with books huh? and also your lecturers in regards to uh, the, the, the what we call the accuracy of information provided by me. Okay. First and foremost, I need you to understand one very important concept. Okay, that is to say, confession okay, is one of the emission. So, emission itself is the big brother here, big family emission. Eh? Okay, whereas confession is this one. Okay, this is just a subset of emission. This is concept number one. Concept number two is these two things. Okay, concept number two, as you all know, whatever evidence, whatever things that you said or mentioned in the court, you have to tender proof. Okay, take for example, I said Ali owes me 100,000 ringgit. Okay, I make such allegation. So by virtue of uh, section 101, section 102 of Evidence Act, I will need to bear the burden to prove the debt exists. As in, uh, Ali really owes me 100,000 in writing. Most, most likely, lah, because this is a civil case. But whereas, if this emission sets in, take for example, Ali admitted or in writing, okay, take for example, in his statement of reply, he admitted that he did borrow 100,000 ringgit for my good self. That means this amounts to an admission. I will not longer be bound to give proof in evidence. So, having said so, you must realize that admission plus confession, uh, this will make the life as a lawyer to be easier because it discharges the burden of proof. Okay, so you have to memorize one very important quote. That is to say, whatever we said in the court, it shall be proved by the party that has it so, except for two things. Facts admitted, that is fall under your admission, applicable to civil case uh, mainly, and confession. Confession in criminal cases. Also, another thing is called judicial notice. Unless the court feel that this sort of information is so widely known by the public, sufficiently notorious, then the court will not take a step to require the parties that said this information to prove that. Okay, you get me, eh? Judicial notice plus facts admitted need no uh, further proof uh, by the parties. So this is why we have uh, admission and confession in the first place. All right? So having said so, you must familiar uh, familiarize yourself with uh, how this, uh, this confession and admission operates. Usually, for examination purpose, you may be required to refer to Evidence Act 1950, that is your primary statute. And if it is a criminal case, you are advised also to cross-refer to your CPC. Very important, eh? Okay. From that, uh, apart from that, there are some specific law 
because uh, at the end of the day, the law is being passed in Malaysia Parliament for the purpose of maintaining social order. So we have strong determination. Our country has so-called strong determination to overcome the issue of corruption, drugs, uh, custom act, and also kidnapping. That was last time, a lot of kidnapping, uh, rich son, rich, uh, I mean, uh, rich man's sons, uh, rich man's daughters, etc. So, some of the proviso inside the specific crime state, for example, corruption or DBA, especially, which are very popular questions to be tested in your upcoming exam, you must be very careful uh, if you do not familiar uh, you are not familiar with this sort of particular act, avoid doing it. Uh, because a lot of uh, time, you will be caught with admission issue and also uh, the presumption, the, the who bears the burden of proof issue. Okay, very important. Uh, as far as to keep yourself uh, safe, uh, try to avoid this sort of uh, specific question. Okay. So I have to go through with you today about this uh, a few sections that I have mentioned. Okay, section 17, 58, 73A, etc. Okay, uh, because this is going to be long lectures, I'll go, go fast. Huh? This one is just to highlight to you uh, what is the brief outlines of those specific sections. Okay, first and foremost, we'll go to emission. Okay, emission. So emission. We have section 17, uh, subsection A, uh, sorry, subsection 1, that specifically define what does it mean by emission. Okay, so section 17 is a general definition to define what is emission and confession, uh, confession all about. This is just First, what is that? Okay, so emission refer to a statement either made by oral or documents which suggest any inference as fact in issue or relevant facts. Okay, remember your subsection uh, section 5 of Evidence Act which is made by any person and under circumstances herein after mentioned. Okay, so you have to dissect this very well. Huh? Okay, to make your life easier, I make this chart uh, for you. Okay, first of all, it must be a statement, okay, oral or document, okay, which suggests any inference, okay. It is not, infer inference means indirectly mean, indirectly say so, okay, this is inference. Okay. It refers to any person towards a circumstances. And what are the proviso that means here and after refer to section 18 to 23. Okay, try to digest this chart very well because section 17 is just a general uh, definition proviso. Okay, so this is how you go about when answering your question. Eh? So section 17. Okay, so the effect of emission, as you all can uh, make out, okay, it dispenses or waive the need to produce evidence. Okay, take for example, using the example that I have you, uh, provided you just now, Chi versus Ali. Okay. For 100,000 ringgit. And then 100k. Okay. And then Ali admitted. So it makes my life easier. I do not need to produce proof to support my claims. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. So this is the effect of emission. Okay. Um, right. Emission must be examined as a whole. Okay. You cannot take emission as in part. Take, for example, using the same example that I have told you, Ali owed me 
100,000 ringgit. And Ali said, yes, I did borrow um, from Chi this, uh, what we call uh, 100,000 ringgit. But actually, this I did take Ali, uh, Chi's 100,000 ringgit. But that money is actually for the purchase of products. Take, for example, so you cannot just cut it short that Ali took my money as emission without looking at subsequent words that it is for the purpose of buying products. You have to look at it as a whole, you know, okay, not in part. That is very important because sometimes uh, uh, lawyers, they love to take the parts of a paragraph or a sentence that are favorable to their case. Then, omitting the rest. It cannot be done. Eh? Okay, Emission must be examined as a whole. Okay. And statements in pleading also very important. It could be taken as emission as well against the party that make it. So, uh, whenever you are drafting, you cannot simply put in the facts that uh, might incriminating yourself or uh, put yourself in a very disadvantageous position. Okay, very important. Right. So, emission will actually buy the maker of that statement. Okay, that means to say whatever factual situation that you have said so, it will be have legal effect on you. But this will not have to do with the question of law issue. Okay, take for example, uh, I use Chi, again, my own name, versus Dr. Gan. Take for example, eh, Dr. Gan. Okay, this is about a medical, medical negligence claim against Dr. Gan who had performed poorly in the operation, resulting uh, to my in personal injury, body injury. Okay. Uh, so, if let's say Gan admitted that he had been careless in performing the surgery, it doesn't mean that I do not need to further rely on Bolam test. It doesn't mean that I need not to call a expert to testify his poor standard of care. You, you get me? Huh? Because negligence, there is a duty of care issue. There is a breach of the duty of care, causation, and damage. So it doesn't mean it dispenses the necessity to call expert, especially in this sort of case here. Even though the other party had admitted fault, but still, uh, it does not dispense the requirement of question of law. This is what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Furthermore, just now I, 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 I brought to your attention that only two things need not to be proved. That is fact emitted. So this is under your section 58. That is applicable to civil case. Very important. Huh? Please, ladies and gentlemen who are here with me today, you must remember this section. Whichever facts that you or both parties had agreed during the proceeding um, as a facta facta yang di prestuju, you do not need to um, bichara, you do not need to uh, argue this matter anymore okay because it is being emitted already okay very important okay so this section uh deals with whenever you you admit the facts you need not to tender proof to support the claims okay but this is only applicable in civil suit this section 58 is exclusively for civil suit only very important eh? okay civil suit okay this is one of the example on how this section 58 come to operation okay 58 eh? normally 
in civil case, we will have fakta-fakta yang dipersetujui, which is the one that both party, parties have agreed open prior to the trial so as to save the time and cost of the whole proceeding. Whereby, we will have another thing called issue-issue yang dibicarakan. I mean, that is to say, you need to tell the court and also direct the court what are the issues that you can settle or you can agree already. Because you cannot be discussing all the facts and facts in issue and also relevant facts inside a trial. Maximum, uh, the court will give you a few days for your trial, you know. They have other matters ongoing as well. Court, you know, it's not exclusively for your you and also your clients. So, you must uh, come to a conclusion that some, some yeah, you I, I know, the, uh, because uh, most of the time that you want to stand in the advantageous position of your client. So, you put everything to discuss, isn't it? But this is not the reality here. You will have to agree some facts that is not disputable at all. So, section 58, very important. And in furtherance, we have uh, section 73AA. That comes into operation by 2012 amendment, uh, whereby if uh, the so-called effects had been agreed by prosecution and also accused before the trial, uh, and some more in the form of writing, then this thing will not be argued in the court. So this is section 73 AA, admissibility of fact in criminal cases. So the rationale behind this is similar to the one that uh, we have in civil uh, case, uh, section 58. This is to save the court time and also the cost of the parties. Okay, reduce the requirement and also the duration of prior dates. Okay, very important. Okay, so apart from that, you also must bear in mind that every allegation of the facts uh, shall be deemed to be admitted if it is not being advert or denied specifically, okay, or you let it uh, develop wholly. That means to say, you let it free flow. You do not stand up and object. You do not raise any form of preliminary objection. You do not stand up and object this question. Okay, You do not um, reply in this, uh, what we call the statement of uh, defense state, for example, the Ali say, uh, I never pay, and then uh, it was you that owe me the money, counterclaim, you never reply, all that. Okay, this will amount to admission as well, eh? because the other party says so, you didn't do anything, you, you did not respond, okay? This is what it meant. And the court will have the discretion require any facts so admitted to be proved otherwise than by such admission. Okay. And eventually, one document uh, must be also proved where a document is not admitted in pleadings but only admitted at the trial in evidence. Uh, admission and confession is a short part. Okay. Because everything, uh, once it is you can say this is emit emission, then you do not need to produce proof, ma. isn't so? So, sometimes this particular section, provisos, I would say, will be subjected to exploitation and abuse. At the end of the day, there will be a ultimate discretion at the hand of the judge to determine whether this is a real emission or not. Okay, bear that in mind, eh? So I will discuss uh, in uh, my uh, further slides who can make the uh, emission. Okay. Emission in very simple term, uh, okay, I just categorize uh, in this uh, section 18 to you to make your life easier. What are the category of people that can make emission? Number one, parties to the proceeding. Okay, bear that in mind. That will be plaintiff or defendant, 
in civil cases, and it will be prosecution or defense in criminal cases. Okay, so you must identify who are the categories of people that can make uh, admission. Okay, uh, so you go step by step, 17, 18, 19, and uh, discuss subsequently during examination. And second categories will be agent of the parties. Okay, agent, the one that can represent the person, for example, the director of the company or the employee of the company, for example. Okay. If you have a so-called representative, okay, take for example those who happens to be a trustee, uh, executor of the will, uh, administrator of uh, what we call LA, or even a guardian uh, for minor, those people can give admission. Okay, and party interested in the subject matter. Okay, and also person from whom interest derive. Okay, those are the parties, five categories of parties that are allowed to give admission by virtue of section 18. Okay, bear that in mind. Eh? Okay, because admission is a powerful tool having said so you must understand once you have admission the maker of this admission will be held accountable for whatever facts that he is admitted and those facts are usually detrimental disadvantageous to the maker okay so please uh, make uh, so uh, the person that can be allowed to make admission will be an important uh, consideration. Okay, so this is category, the one, the party to the proceeding, agent, okay, person interested, I said to you already, there are subcategory two, whether the person having proprietary or pecuniary interest in the subject matter or the person where the interest derive from. Okay, take for example the one that give you the gift, hadiah. Okay. So uh section 18 still uh, I mean section 19 expand uh, expand the pre-existing category of section 18. Section 18 already give you five categories of uh, people that can give admission, whereby section 19 here further expand the scope of the people that can uh, give admission. Okay, so we will see by next chart. Okay, see how it works. Okay, so section 19 very interested, uh, very interesting. Huh? Okay, I will want you to understand this particular uh, what we call illustration. Okay, a here, by right, is a so-called manager. La. I put it very simple. Okay, this B here has got a lot of houses. So he hired A to be his manager to collect rent from C. So A now sue B. Okay, now is the uh sorry, now is the B. B is the boss, isn't it? The one that got a lot of house. B sue A for not collecting rent from C to B. Because by right, this one, C shall be the party that pay the rent to B. And A must collect the money from C, then subsequently give to A, isn't it? So a statement made by C, okay, he OB ran is an emission. Okay, so you look at this particular illustration carefully. When B question A, why you did not collect rent from C? Okay, you see or not? This is a part, just now we mentioned section 18, isn't it? Okay, only who can give emission here? A or B because they are the parties of the suit. Okay, C does not fall into any categories 
that I have discussed to you, the five categories. He's not agent. He's not parties of the suit. He's not representative. He's not some sort of people with interested proprietary or pecuniary interest. But whereby, when he say, no, I'm not, okay? But this can be a form of admission, okay? If A denies that C did O ran to B, okay? Try to understand that. Eh? So it opens to stranger of the suit to go in as admission, provided this section is relevant. Section 19. Eh? Okay. So what I want to say again, this section 19 provide the room for stranger, okay, to talk something that amount to admission. Once again, I want to repeat, admission is a powerful tool. It's a shortcut where you can achieve. You can even win the case, you know. So, uh, you must uh, learn it by heart, lah, okay, and utilize it well. So, section 20, we still talk about who can make admission. Eh? Okay, section 20 allows another stranger, another person that is not in section 18, which is expressly referred by party to the suit. Okay, I will direct your attention to this diagram again. Okay, take for example, okay, we raise a question, okay, to A. So again, is the B versus A suit. Okay, just imagine this is a civil suit between B suing A. Okay, so when B asks, is the horse mentally sound? A answered, you can refer or you can check with C. So whatever C said, okay, take for example, the statement made here is the horse is sounded mine. Take for example, this will amount to admission on behalf of A because A have directed this question to C. Okay, again, I cannot emphasize enough, admission is a powerful tool. You cannot, uh, and the effect of this admission, uh, you cannot be estopped, you know. There's a principle of doctrine of uh, estopper uh, applying. When you have done so, you cannot go back to original position. When you make some statement that is not favorable to you, Let's say, for example, in your, your statement of defense, subsequently, you cannot say no, you know, oh, no, God, I didn't mean that way. I didn't admit uh, the doctrine of extorper will set in. Huh? So this is uh, under your section 31 and 105. Okay, just bear that in mind. This is how what we call... Uh, 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 the doctrine of estoppel section 115 and section 31 okay estoppel eh? important okay so section 20 here also provide a room that allow a stranger that is specifically referred by a party in a suit to make admission on his or her behalf okay we are still uh, talking about who can make admission here. Eh? Okay. Mm. okay, so this is uh, regardless. Uh, okay, next section is about proof of admission against making them and by on their behalf. Okay, first of all, you have to go on what is the proof of admission. Number one, it must be self-harming, okay? In order for you to amount to an admission, the person that make it or the representative that make it must suffer loss. The thing will become detrimental. The thing will become worse for them, okay? So their case will become weak. This is what it meant by... Uh, Admission. Okay, so very important. Eh? 
it will be harmful to their own interest. Okay. If let's say the emission is favorable to them, okay, then this is not even an emission. Again, I want to repeat to you, the effect of emission must be losing for the maker. Okay, for example, Chi Su Ali for 100,000 ringgit. Ali make emission. By virtue of this emission, it meant Ali did say something that is uh, showing his liability towards that 100,000 claim, not otherwise. Okay, take for example, what is otherwise means uh, the one that I have give, give to you. I Ali sold Chi some products that amount to 100,000 ringgit. This cannot be emission, okay? It must be losing for the maker, as simple as that, okay? So I have used the example to talk to you already. And one more principle that you should bear in mind that uh, emission itself is not everything. It's not conclusive of, um, how to say, uh, the whole case itself. You must also tender corroborative or supportive evidence to make your case stronger. Okay. And uh, this other illustration. Okay. I want you to look at one very important section here that is without prejudice communication. Okay. Without prejudice communication is extremely important for your exam and also to your practice. This is one example of without prejudice communications, whereby this is a correspondence. Okay, you can see this word big, big here, without prejudice. Okay, when we are offering the other party some sort of settlement, or we are in the process of negotiation, negotiation, okay, whatever we said, whatever we have proposed here, cannot be something that go against us. Okay, eventually, you must understand that the goal of civil litigation is to reach a so-called settlement of a matter. That means we want to stop the dispute. We want to harmonize the society. You get me? So actually the court is encouraging uh, mediation, uh, alternative uh, dispute resolution, mediation, uh, arbitration. You discuss uh, and then you propose an amount, something like that. But somehow or rather, there must be some form of statutory protection in order for the parties in a particular civil case to open up their heart and discuss whatever terms and condition freely. Isn't so? This is why Section 23 comes into place. Okay. Section 23 in very short term mean whatever it is for the purpose of negotiation, whatever you have made. Okay, take for example, you apologize in medical negligence case. You said that you want to offer the patients 100,000 ringgit to settle uh, for, uh, for to compensate his loss. All that uh, cannot be used in trial later if the negotiation fail. Okay. I hope uh, you do understand because this is a very important uh, to your examination, okay? So, what are the criteria for you to make this uh, section 23 operable? Okay, so this is a privilege, you know, because whatever evidence that you have collected throughout the correspondence of negotiation, you cannot use it, you know. That means to say, uh, sometimes you feel like, oh, the other party already admit and willing to pay my, my, my plaintiff, take for example, medical negligence case again. Why can't I use it? Uh? So, there must be a delicate balance in between whether can use or not. So, there are criteria that set out by 
uh, famous and landmark case of AB Chu investment against Lim John Kong here. Okay, this privilege only applies to statement by parties and their lawyers. Okay, remember, uh, only parties involved if they are negotiating, then this communication is privileged. You cannot engage other agent, you know, those, uh, how to say, uh, sometimes because the matter is involving a family dispute and all that, sometimes you do engage, like, you know, your other relative, take, for example, you fight with your brother, sister and brother fight. They call their cousin, okay, to act on their behalf like some sort of uh, to, to let the matter rest. Uh. So uh, this sort of agent, if it ever appears, it cannot be caught under Section 23. Uh, okay? And the privilege may be waived with the consent of the parties. Okay? Provided it is uh, agreeable by the parties that this sort of communication is not uh, without prejudice per se, then the privilege may be waived. Okay, but it must be bilateral um, and it must be consensual, you know. Okay, a party cannot unilaterally waive the privilege. So remember how the, the section operates. Eh? Okay, mm. so confession. Okay, we move to confession eh? because otherwise it will take very long. Again, when you look at confession, you must know that this is criminal only criminal cases so usually pp against chi pp against gun all this sort of case lah, okay will have confession do not apply your term wrongly so this is an admission made any time by a person uh, accused of an offense stating or suggesting the inference that he committed that offense. So this is the full definition here. Okay, section 17, rule 2. Okay, the court will only treat a statement amount to confession if the accused admits to the elements that constitute to an offense. Okay, take for example, a crime usually con um, comprised of two elements, isn't it? Your actus rare and also your mens rare. Okay, actus rare here, take for example, rare. Okay, rare. Okay, there must be penetration, isn't it? Into the private uh, organ of a lady. La. Okay, so this penetrate thing had been admitted by rapists. So this is one element of the crime, you know. So this will be treated as confession. I did penetrate. Saya pernah masuk. Something like that. Okay, please. Huh? So uh, in Anagonda against the Queen, whether the statement is confession is objective one very important because uh, objective and subjective means it doesn't require the the view or the perspective of the accused so it does not require the accused to say that this is my own confession because i feel that it is a uh, sinful berdosa saya buat salah something like that his view his perceptive uh, perspective is not important at all. So this is objective. So it is evaluate uh, something like reasonableness. Lah. We have to see whether this confession itself uh, is reasonable or not. So third party perspective. Okay. Very important. And in uh, Lemonade, eh, this is a, a famous case also. Okay. So you must... Uh, appreciate the facts very well. So this uh, accused here, Lamanit, is from Indonesia and then he was arrested by Indonesian police taken to Blakang. Okay. So uh, whenever you have this sort of, uh, uh, how to say this, uh, 
admission because he bombed the, the thing, you know, and confront Tasi period. That is Malaysia versus Indonesia at that time. So it, a lot of Indonesian uh, so-called terrorists la, or uh, the frontliners of Indonesia warriors, they are quite trying to create chaos in Malaysia. So whatever they said is amount to confession of crimes. Okay, you try to understand these uh, facts. Okay, and uh, in Her Chun Singh as well, uh, one very important highlight that I want to bring to your attention is no statement that contains self-exculpatory matter can amount to offense, confession if exculpatory statement is one of some fact which is, if true, were negative the offense alleged to have been committed. Okay, that means to say, if one of the things turns out to be true, because admission, confession, you must look at it as a whole. Man. If one part of it is true, then it negate the offense. Then it cannot be uh, a confession. Okay? Mm. So the treatment uh, of admission and confession in Evidence Act. So, as a confession is one category, I told you just now, okay, admission is one big family. It contains confession. Okay. So, as a confession is a category of admission, a statement does not amount to confession under section 17 subrule 2 may nevertheless be an admission if the definition in section 17 sub rule 1 is applied. Okay, so this is to mean that confession and admission punya relationship is like this. Okay, very important for you to uh, digest it. Uh. That is to say, all confession is admission, but not all admission is confession. Confession in only applicable in criminal cases. Please bear that in mind. A lot of people got uh, uh, got themselves lost. Lah. Okay. okay. The principle of admissibility uh, in the sense that confession, okay, because confession it operates just like admission in civil case. You must imagine police, uh, they have limited manpower and resources. They have so many cases, criminal offences happen daily, isn't so? They do not have time uh, to explore and dig into every single matter. So sometimes there is a balance, you know. Confession will lead to discovery of, uh, let's say, a dead body, a murder weapon, a stolen car. This sort of confession is actually very useful in criminal charges for prosecution to prove guilt of the accused. But eventually, we must also realize the bargaining power between the accused and also the state is very different, isn't so? The accused is just one small little peanut in the society. They are virtually nobody. But whereas the state will have money and also people, what if uh, there are some so-called political setup or some multi, uh, you know, some ill intention driven type of uh, criminal prosecution? Okay, so uh, the confession will eventually fall back to one very important test. Huh? That is the voluntariness test whether the accused made the confession out of his own reasonable mind or not, or he is being forced, he's being threatened to do so. That is one thing that you must always bear in mind. All right? So section 24 here provides protection to the accused so that, you know, Every time you you you, uh, I'm not sure whether any of you watch uh movies or not. If let's say the police keep on uh induce threatening, give no food uh 
and water to the queues during interrogation or lockup. So virtually I cannot stand, especially under this hot weather. If let's say I was not allowed to drink for half a day or even uh, 18 hours, I will be dying. It's better for me to admit first and also to confess everything. But I'm not actually doing it out of my good, uh, reasonable mind. I was being forced. So this sort of confession will be deemed irrelevant. Okay, please bear that in mind. ITP, uh, inducement, threat, or uh, promise. This is, uh, I mean, the statutory protection for the accused, whom I have addressed to you just now, have a weaker position, have a very weak bargaining power with the state. Okay? So the nature of the so-called uh, inducement or threat is a uh, obvious form of inducement will be physically assault. Lah. Take, for example, our uh, current Prime Minister, Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim's cases, whereby he got assaulted uh, during the, what we call, during the lockup period. Mm. So, um, okay, one more thing here, you should refer to uh, PP against Lao Sai Sik here. In order for you to amount this ITP, uh, okay, inducement, threat, or promise, three things must be satisfied. Okay. First of all, one should be able to say that without it, the person would not have made the statement. Okay. If let's say I was not being withheld from drinking water, I will not make that statement. Okay. Very important. Eh? Okay. Second thing, it must be temporal na of nature. The, when is the time that this ITP happened? Okay, whether it is just three minutes after the ITP, I surrender and then I make a confession. Or it is made after three days, four days, and then I lock up and then the ITP was removed. Still, I make the confession. So the time is of essence here. You must look at when the accused make such confession, whether it is contemporaneous or it is after a few days. Okay, it makes a difference. Huh? And thirdly, it should be sufficient in the opinion of court to make the accused suppose that he would get advantage. Okay, take for example, after making the confession, the police allow me to drink water. I will get advantage, ma. at least I don't have to die, isn't it? Maximum the penalty, take for example, lah, if let's say I committed theft, I'll be caught to prison and get a stroke, for example, I mean stroking, lah, okay? But at least I wouldn't die of thirst. So this is the three, three criteria. Eh? Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. I want you to know that, um, okay, there's a case PP against uh, Naikan. Okay. The words you had better tell the truth will help to vitiate the confession. Okay. Sometimes uh, it is case to case basis. Uh, it depends the whole scenario as a whole. The most important test that you must rely on is whether the confession was done voluntarily by the accused or not. If it is not, if it's under pressure or whatsoever form, then it will be render the confession inadmissible. Okay? Mm. So there is a long story about this case, which I will suggest you to read on your own. Okay. Um, whereby uh, you just need to memorize one thing. Like, if it is caught by the issue of voluntariness, then uh, most likely this sort of confession is not admissible. Okay? Mm. So the importance of the words here is that unless the accused confess, he will be worse off. Okay? So that means it is still fall back on the test, the three tests that I have highlighted to you in the case of uh, Lao Sedek, the accused must eventually uh, gain something 
If I confess to you, I get water. I need not to be beaten up by you anymore. So I get relief. Lah. Temporarily relief, obviously. So this is what it meant. Okay, very important. Eh? Okay, and criteria B is, apart from that, uh, what we call the, if you dissect section 24 fully, so it must be referenced to the charge. Okay, so the inducement threat of promises must relate to the charge. It cannot be a, an isolated or independent issues. Okay, these are the criteria. And to avoid evil of temporal nature. So the accused confession will remain voluntary if the inducement threat or promise is spiritual in content, such as, for example, if let's say you say to him, if you admit that you rape a girl, then eventually the God will forgive you. So this is something to do uh, with religious, with spiritual, you know. This is not um, some temporal nature thing, okay? Then this sort of admission will be held voluntary, okay? Uh, it's not just, um, how to say, uh, um, if uh, you say something spiritual related to self-repent, you admit you are sinful and uh, you, 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 you deserve the punishment because you committed crime. So this thing, Will, will, will still render it uh, admissible. Eh? Okay? Please remember that. And the inducement and threat and promise must come from a person in authority. Okay? The inducement cannot be from some sort of family member. Okay? Take for example, the family of the accused wanted to beat him up if he does not admit. Hmm. So this will not talk as privilege under section 24. Remember, uh, section 24 is to protect the victims or the accused subject to the abusive behavior by authorities, mainly police line. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay, so the inducement, uh, threat, or promise must be from person in authority. Eh? Okay, please bear that in mind. Okay, so in the Okinan case, the previous counsel held that anyone who has authority or control over the accused or over the proceedings or, or prosecution against him. So the person has authority uh, must be the one that uh, fall under the meaning of this uh, definition. Okay, proceeding, prosecution. Okay, control. So who can be the so-called person of authority? That means police line. Okay. PP or magistrate or session court judge. Okay. In a very clear-cut manner lah, to speak so. Okay. So PP against Night Khan ah, actually ah, span a bit of meaning for person of authority, you know. It says that even the manager of an estate was the person in authority. As a factual circumstances of this case, why the manager is uh, held to be person in authority, remember the definition that we have, he has control over the cues. That's why he can be deemed as a person in authority. Okay, mm. please uh, understand it by your heart. Okay, so does oppression actually vitiate confession? So what happened if the so-called person in authority did not actually use physical violence or words to induce the confession, uh, confession but just merely causing him to be uh, having discomfort Okay, take for example, I interrogate you for 16 hours, 18 hours. I let you uh, no sleep, lah, deprive you from sleeping. And then uh, I don't want to give you food, but I give you water. 
Okay, does this oppression amounts to a form of uh, act that might reshape the voluntariness on the uh, the accused part? Uh, okay, the the section twenty four did not actually puts in wordings oppression should reshape the voluntariness. So we have to fall back on case law. Okay. In Dato Mokta Hashim here, the federal court actually conclude deprivation of food, drink, sleep, the manner in which the accused was dressed and the fact that he is being prevented performing his prayers make his confession safe. Okay? So, but, but again, uh, this is uh, uh, factual based, you know. What amounts to oppression does not really have a standard guidelines. That means to say, uh, if uh, uh, me, for example, I cannot stand starving, you know, I got gas severe gastric problems. So even I don't eat 12 hours, I will get a gastritis, stomach ache. But whereby, what, whereby, probably the other person, you starve him one day, also no problem. So does it amount to oppression? It's a matter of uh, factual basis. Okay? Everybody is different. Huh? So, um, so you have to understand from the case of Dato Mokta Hashim that although Section 24 makes no reference as to the definition of what does it mean by oppression, and it is suggested on the sufficiency of inducement threat or promise apply no less to confession by oppression. Okay, it is conceivable uh, in the situation whereby Dato Mota Hashim be interrogated for long duration. He cannot be uh, uh he cannot pray, he cannot eat, those type of situation, okay will some sort of uh, give rise to the impression to the accused that he will continue to suffer unless he confess. Then this can be amount to oppression. Okay? But again, this is uh, a case-to-case basis. Okay? So similar here, we have case of Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim also talk about the issue of uh, oppression but uh, the how how to say uh, the uh, the rules does not change much eventually there is still an issue of voluntariness whether the court the the how to say uh, the court is thinking that a confession is safe or not Okay, eventually, as a presiding judge, huh, your ultimate goal is to seek out the truth of the so-called event and give justice to everybody involved, you know. So, you have to uh, take into consideration whether this confession is a safe one or not. So, you have to take into account ITP plus whether oppression okay, raised by the defense is valid or not. Okay. So if it is, then this sort of confession uh, is not safe to be considered by the court. Okay. Court will be doing a mistake if it allows confession to go in. Because like I have said to you, multiple times uh, I said, uh, confession makes the job of DPP, the prosecution, easier because no need to prove no need to prove okay all right so not all forms like i said uh, not all forms of discomfort will we share a confession because whether it is voluntary or not will depend on all circumstances of the case okay because everybody's coping mechanism is different Somebody can uh, work under a lot of stress. They can do multitasking. Whereby, some others who are vulnerable, who are 
mentally not so strong, if you give them 10 tasks per day, probably they'll crack down into depression. So not for all forms of discomfort will we shed a confession. Eventually, uh, the court will still seek a balance in between confession because if you confess, it's good, you know. I mean, uh, it's good for the court, for the court as well as for the DPP because the case closed straight away. Okay, uh, so there must be a balance, lah. Okay, in between uh, whether accepting the uh confession or not. So, uh, in PP against Veran Kuti here, okay, four hours of interrogation prior to the recording of the statement did not amount to oppression. Okay, it's just four hours. So, um, the accused can still stand it. The high court feel that it's nothing for the accused. So, that form of confession can be safely admitted in the court. Okay, this is what it means. And the criteria F is continue operation of the inducement threat. Okay, so uh, the inducement threat or promise, <coughs> which was made sometimes prior to the confession, must be in the way it is possible for the prosecution to argue that the ITP has gone or dissipated and therefore the confession was voluntarily okay remember the example that i have told you let's say you give inducement threat or promise on today on today to the accused you force him like you use some sort of methods like to force him to confess but the accused did not confess today so during Raman period on the fourth day Suddenly, the accused uh, confessed. So the ITP was actually gone already, disappeared already. So the confession will be a voluntary one, not privileged under section 24 here. Okay. Hmm. And you have to look at this uh, section 28 together with your section 24. If you want to negate the effect of section 24, because we cannot control uh, the whole many, many people in the police of, uh, police forces, isn't it? Uh, sometimes some police will use some uh, desperate method in order to force the accused to admit some facts, whereby some will use a uh, diplomatic methods. This is they are games that one will play good guy, the other will play a uh, bad guy role. So this is how it usually works. If let's say the confession is made after okay, after the so-called ITP had been fully removed uh, in the opinion of court. Let's say let's say uh, back to the example that I have given to you. The accused was subjected to ill treatment on the first day of uh, his lockup but after a few days is okay he made confession on the fourth day whereby all the threats all the inducement promise had been removed already and the court is opined so this will be relevant okay so it doesn't mean that once you are subjected you got bitten in your eyes okay it it doesn't mean that the confession made on the fourth day is not relevant, you know. It is still relevant. Huh? So be careful of the section. Okay. I think this subject itself uh, is quite difficult. Uh. It's quite difficult unless you, how to say, uh, unless you practice. Uh. Unless you practice, uh, then you can uh, know the operation of law. Okay. So PP against Nikon, against the manager case here, the accused confessed to the estate manager and two hours later to magistrate. It was held that the so-called inducement in respect of the first confession continued to operate in relation to the second confession. Okay, that means to say section 28 cannot apply. Okay, remember that. Huh? So, sections 24 will still protect 
naked. Whatever he had admitted, whatever he had confessed to his crime cannot be admitted in the court. Okay? Mm. So section 29 uh, said that confession otherwise relevant not to become irrelevant because of promise of secrecy. Okay. This one also very important. Section 24 talks about ITP and some case law suggests oppression, isn't it? Okay. What if, let's say, for example, I was caught, I was caught by the police for stealing uh, Christie money for Tefla. Okay. And then the police say to me, okay, you just tell me the truth and I'll keep it a secret. I will not tell anybody. Okay. Eventually, I confess. I said to police, I did uh, steal Christie money. So can I be protected under the law? Okay. Under section 29, it is clearly no. Okay. Whatever is it under a promise of secrecy or in consequence of a deceptive uh, practice, huh? okay. So, or whether I was drunk or under intoxication, or okay, I show you another slide is better. Lah. This one is quite this one. Okay, there are four situations, huh? section 29. Okay. If the police say that they will keep secret, if I was got cheated lah. They use a trick lah. Okay. For example, uh, the police cheated that. Okay. Uh, I found 100,000 in your house. That one is actually belong to Christy. And then, out of fear, I admitted, oh, that 100,000, I steal it from Christy. So, I was cheated, isn't it? So, it is still under section 29. This sort of statement, this sort of confession is admissible. Eh? Remember, eh? And uh, it was made in to answer question where I need not to have answer or I was not being warned uh, before I made such confession. Okay, so that means to say even the police did not ask me because I'm panicked. I wall out everything. I confess. I talk non-stop. Okay, uh, so these sort of things you cannot rely during your defense whatever you have told already okay during the so-called confession it shall be admissible by the court okay very important eh so caution statement as a shortcut tool to validate confession or not so caution statement i've told you before in my uh, cpc class if you cannot recall you just look at it because section 113 uh, you have to read together uh, with section 113 CPC for you to understand how the operation of confession work in practice. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so, this are the statement. Okay. So, uh, in order for your understanding, okay, first thing first, you must uh, understand that to the amendment, uh, Okay, the police is actually not longer authorized to obtain a caution statement under section 112 and section 113 of the amendment. In fact, the latest amendment, uh, the not letters anymore, uh, the amendment had removed the confession. As a matter of practice now, what you need to memorize now, okay, section 112 is the recorded statement, isn't it? Rakaman percakapan daripada uh, orang kena tudu. Okay, T. So, to prevent the abuse of powers and etc. So, all this section 112 will be automatically deemed to be privileged. Okay. That means to say, whatever incriminating statement said during rakaman percakapan polis huh, cannot be admitted to go against the accused nowadays. 
I hope you do understand what I'm trying to say here. I repeat myself, section 112 now cannot be admitted to go against the accused nowadays. Okay, uh, This is another statutory step to pro prevent the accused to be subjected to violence, uh, you know, those ITP and also oppression Okay, by the police. Lah. Hmm. And uh, right, this is the deletion for your information. Okay, so section one, two, you can refer to my police investigation CPC YouTube uh, channel. And section one, one, three, you have to know the proviso in detail. That one also I elaborate during my CPC class, I believe. If you do not understand this, I afraid you cannot understand how confession work in criminal this you have to read together uh with section 113 so for your betterment um, and also because we have constraint of time here i do not plan to repeat myself here you just need to know section 113 sub rule 4 whereby your section 27 okay section 32 sub rule 1 a, that is uh, commonly known as your dying declaration. I and J is regarding to the police uh, discharging their official duties here. Okay, this other exception whereby section 112 can okay to be admitted. Okay, I put it very simple. Huh? I repeat myself one more time. Huh? Section 112 is a privilege one. Nothing said inside the Rakaman Prajakapan during police interrogation, if it is so incriminating to the accused, can be admitted. So everything negative about the accused cannot be admitted by the court, except section 27, section 32, subrule 1, subrule A, and subrule I, and subrule J. So these are the exceptions. Please memorize. Okay, please memorize. So section 115 is absolute already. Uh, last time we used to have a confession and records before a magistrate. Uh, but now this magistrate also very busy. Lah. That's why they deleted this uh, thing. Okay, so we have to look at section 25 and 26 first. Okay, so confession to police officer below rank of inspector not to be proof. Okay, so and also section 26, confession by accused while in custody of police not be proof against him. Okay, so are they becomes uh, absolute, obsolete, huh? obsolete? That means to say this uh, uh, no longer applicable. Okay, so we have to uh, look at one case law that, mm, that is PP against uh, Tan Yen Sang here. Okay, it said that okay, P17 was recorded by magistrate on 21st, 2014, where section 115 CPC that I've shown to you, actually section 115 allow magistrate to record guilt uh, admission or statement lah. that one is already being deleted in the amendment okay so therefore there's no more power for magistrate to record guilt uh, statement or admission so p17 uh, p17 is a form of exhibit lah. exhibit okay one of the evidence lah. important evidence exhibit eh? okay uh, made not accepted under section 26 of the act however the guilt before the session court judge or magistrate could still be accepted under section 26 of the act okay uh, if you don't understand these two i think still okay it's still okay uh, okay so what about the use of confession against the core accused take for example okay there is four of five person uh, i use case uh, pp against patmanandan nalianan sosila wati case okay patmanandan nalianan uh, 
If let's say one of the accused confessed he had killed the, the victim, so what weight should the court give to such confession because all these five accused are charged together in a trial of murder take for example if one accused said you know i and chi and gun and christy and uh, low did all this crime we did kill the victim together so it's a form of confession but it brought along me gun and christy and etc so does it have any effect or not to me or Christy? It's called accused. Okay, we will check it from the case law eh? because confession itself, like I say, is a shortcut eh? because you do not need to prove. Eh? So what is the weight here? Okay, so it is given under your section 30 of Evidence Act. Consideration of proof confession affecting person making it and others jointly under the trial for same offense okay no doubt we want to solve the case we want to end the matters we want to restore the justice isn't it but uh, having said so the court may take into consideration the confession as against other person as well as against the person who makes the confession Okay, so how does it actually operate? Okay, uh, I want you to look at these slides carefully. Okay, because this one we often feel about it in practice, you know. Usually it's like a, let's say section 39B, uh, DBA case, drug trafficking. We have uh, 10 accused, 10 OKT. Let's say... KT A and B confess. Oh, actually, uh, we all one syndicate. We traffic drug, we sell drugs to KTV. La. So all of us involved. Uh, B, uh, C also involved, D also involved, E until F la, also involved. So uh, the confession, in order for you to be caught under section 30, uh, uh, okay, back to the point, uh, admission and confession starting from section 17, isn't it? Until section 31, isn't it? So these are all under your relevancy, you know, relevancy chapter, you know, okay? So uh, the criteria for you to go under this section 30, okay, there must, A, there must be a joint trial, okay, and B, there must be a confession. Confession means you admit that you did some criminal offense. Okay, that confession is negative to you, to the maker. Okay, and C, the confession of guilt must affect the maker substantially the same, same extent as to his uh, core accused. Okay, take for example, A, B and C. Okay. They commit, they are jointly trial for rape, aggravated rape. Lah, okay. Rape plus stealing the thing from the uh, theft. Lah, easy. Lah, huh? Theft. Okay. At the same time, they rape a girl and also they steal the wallet of that girl. Okay. Let's say, for example, C admitted that. A, B, C committed theft together, but not the uh, but at the same time she said it was A and C who raped C, not him, but they did uh, theft together. So you see, uh, the effect of this confession cannot be taken account because B did not suffer the same loss. As in, as in to A and C. A and C, whereby they will suffer from rape plus theft, you know. That one will carry different punishment. Eh? B only admitted as in to theft. But he tried to bring A and C into the, 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 the so-called, uh, becomes the scapegoat for him lah, uh, to escape the liability of raping a girl. So how can, I mean, this sort of confession does not carry the same extent of uh, effect lah, to the maker as to court accused. So it cannot be accepted. 
And B, uh, very important, the confession must be duly proof. Okay. Why is that so? Again, we have to we have to balance the interests of the state and also the weak bargaining power of accused. Take for example, I am the police. Okay. I want to achieve KPI. Okay. I will just cash A, B, C, and C plus C. Uh, okay. I will put them as all of them are called accused. Okay, T lah. Okay. Okay, T. And then I will set them for a trial. Okay. I'll set them for a trial. Actually, C is just some wanderers, some beggars from the street that I cash. Whereby, as a police officer, in order for me to achieve a KPI, I will use some trick lah. Okay, I want to I want to give C some you know some since he got nothing to eat outside, isn't it? C if let's say confess to the crimes, then probably he will enjoy in inside the prison. So what I will do is I'll charge them together, and whereby C will say A, B, and including C himself committed the crime. So easy lah. If I use C statement as a whole, so automatically because confession is a very powerful tool and it's a shortcut. So I will win the case and then I will achieve my KPI. Okay. So the court also very smart. The confession must be duly proof. You cannot simply just say something. Okay. Very important. Huh? Okay. So section 30 says nothing about the evidentiary value. Okay. Having said so, confession is all negative effect to the makers, isn't it? Okay. It doesn't expressly say, okay, uh, yeah, why sudden quotes like that? Okay, section 13 did not specifically mention about the evidentiary value. So it leave the the power, okay, of the to decide the weight of such confession uh, of court accused lah, okay, at the wisdom of court and also the discretion of court. So the court will have a wide room to discuss about this, you know, how much to give. Okay. Uh PP against Nodin Johan here, uh, the court said that the accused cannot simply convicted merely by confession of a court accused. It's just like the ABC, the KPI example that I want to highlight to you. There must be some other evidence against him. Otherwise, the whole charge, huh, the whole justice system will go haywire. Trust me, very easy. For you, uh, for me to frame other people, all I need to do is to bring some other Court accused, beggars, street wanderers, and then, yeah, you see, they admit, admit already what? Nobody will admit the uh, things that they never did, isn't it? So, this is a very powerful tool. So, the court accept the confession. So, some innocent guys may be caught by this sort of uh, uh, regulation and rules, you know. So, the court is very cautious. Lah. Mm. So, Buboni Sadu Sahu against the king, again, uh, the confession of the core accused uh, cannot be used only in support of, can only be used to support other um, evidence and it cannot be the sole foundation of conviction. Okay, that means to say section 30 operates as supportive evidence. It is not everything. Okay, same thing here. Lah. Sim Acho. Okay, Batok Mota Hashim. Okay. Uh, it is clear from a long line of authorities that confession of court accused is only an element of consideration. Okay. So you still need other evidence to prove the guilt of a person. Okay. Uh Chun Singh also said the same thing. All right. And we move to one more important section, that is section 27. Favorite, uh, favorite question, uh, because section 27, if you can recall section 113, sub rule 4, 
this is one of the exception, you know, where your section 112 statement can be admitted, huh? okay? Okay to be admitted inside the court against the accused. Okay, so what are this section 27 so special about? Okay, so section 27, you must realize the principle or the rationale behind section 27. As I have told you, our police has limited manpower as well as to resource. Let's say I murder my wife with a knife and also I hide the body somewhere else. Okay, If I never disclose the facts uh, where I throw my knife, where I hide the body, Police will have a very hard time, isn't it? To they, they, they do not have scanner, isn't it? Over the whole world. They can't even find the murder weapon. They even they can't even find the cops. So it requires some sort of principle that some facts, if it is leading to the discovery, uh, okay, of a facts uh, can be admitted. Okay. So again, this is discovery. If it leads to discovery of a fact, okay, that means to say for you to set this sort of uh, uh, this section 27, the police will never know where is the body buried or where is the murder weapon being thrown unless I told uh, I, I, I tell them so. Okay, so they must not know in the first place, uh, very important. Okay. So, this is discovered as a consequence of information. Okay. For example, what are the information? So, I throw the, uh, what we call the knife in Sungai Melaka okay. and bury the body uh, in A Famosa, lah, take for example, somewhere near A Famosa. So, these are the facts, you know that I told the police. So this is considered as discovery of facts. Okay. And such information is received from a person accused. That means coming from the accused. Okay. It cannot come from general public. Okay. In order for this section 27 to uh to, to set place. Uh, Okay, and the person is in the custody of police officer, and such information as relates distinctly to the facts discovered. Okay, very important for you to highlight all these criteria. Okay, first thing first, the fact itself again, it must be a relevant fact. That means to say this is something to do with murder okay murder okay that means to say whether it's a fact in issue or relevant facts ah. this is under your section file ah. okay the fact said uh shall be discovered in consequence of the information received uh, using the sungai Melaka and a famosa okay as a rational of this ah, Okay, eventually, uh, it will bring the light and which will be to, uh, difficult to find out otherwise. Okay, because I have told you why section 27 is so special. That is because all the, I mean, uh, you cannot just uh, ask 100 or 200 police officers just to handle one murder case, isn't it? Maximum, you have a team of police investigation, maybe around 5 to 10 person. They can search from Moa to Mlaka, the whole area cover one by one, inch by inch, to discover the so-called uh, the facts. Where where I find the, uh, where I hide the uh, murder weapon and where I buried the body. Okay? So the discovery, it's not the murder weapon that can be emitted, you know. It's not the uh, what we call the body that can emit, you know. Section 27 talks about the facts, uh, okay, leading to discovery. 
it's not about the what we call the weapon or whatsoever. Uh. Please be clear. Uh. It's about fakta. Uh. Ta. Mm. And if you look at Francis Anthony Sami here against PP, okay, what he said, Tanam kepala ali di kebun kelapa sawit carung puting. Okay. Di sinilah saya buang itu barang, rotan dan seluar ali. Sinilah tempat saya tanam kepala ali. Sinilah tempat buang plastik isi kepala ali. So this is all the facts that is not known by the police, isn't it? Before uh, before this uh, Anthony Sami make the disclosure, okay, the police will not know all this, isn't it? Okay, so these facts is admissible under section 27. Okay, so ordinary recovery cannot be turned into discovery. Okay, I told you again, section 27 is a special proviso in relation to your section 113 sub rule 4. That means whatever rakaman percakapan dalam lokap polis di bawah section 112 adalah boleh dimasuki dalam mahkamah. So, very special. Then, the police will tend or the authorities will tend to abuse it, isn't it? So, if let's say the police already know that fakta, okay, it cannot use or exploit section 27 for their benefits. Okay, so this is what it meant. Ordinary recovery cannot be turned into discovery. If the police already know where the articles are hidden, is discovery is mere recovery and will not be admissible. That means to say the police is using this uh, section 27 wrongly. Lah, okay, the discovery must be some of some facts which will be difficult or impossible for the police to discover without the assistance of the accused. Okay, super duper important. Eh? Okay. Mm. So, same thing here. Uh, I mean, Siu Yok Kyung against BP said that any information to be admissible under Section 27 will include Q's statement, his act or conduct. Okay, conduct means pointing the place. Lah, okay, if let's say, uh, usually the investigation police like that, they will bring you to crime scene, you know. Okay, let's say you didn't say anything. Okay, the police did not know where the bo body was buried. And simply the accused point to one bushes outside his house. Uh, that will be caught under section 27. Even though he did not say it out, he did not document it down, but it is still admissible under Section 27. Uh, okay, this is pursuant to your uh, Siu Yok Kyung case. Mm. But still, uh, uh, for such information to be admissible, uh, no duty is placed on prosecution to prove voluntariness. Okay, this is subjected to debate. Lah. So whether... Um, Section 27 and Section 24. Okay, remember Section 24? I hope you are listening. Huh? Section 24 talks about ITP, the inducement threat and promise that one actually will protect the accused. Okay, protect the accused. Okay, so whether this uh, voluntariness is an issue or not under Section 27. Okay. Uh, in uh, this uh, what we call Azila Hadri against PP, uh, that one is uh, the Tantuya case. Uh. Okay. Now, if let's say, for example, the police did know some sort of information about the Puncha Alam, something like that, can the police use Section 27 if they have prior knowledge? Okay. The same thing is no. Okay, the same uh, principle of law. If let's say the police already have prior information, section 27 will not be applied. Okay, because 
it tends to be abused. Lah. It tends to be abused. Okay. Hmm. So the court will uh, use two tests whether the fact uh, again uh, is a uh, whether it's a uh, discovery or recovery. Okay. I'm so sorry, I'm using mouse. Uh, very difficult for me to, to write. Okay. And secondly, what was the information supplied by the cues relate distinctly to the facts thereby discovered? Okay, whether it is related to the body or not. Okay, so interestingly, uh, we have a lot of case. Uh, it's about murder. Uh, because murder, uh, for you to prove a person is dead, uh, you have to find evidence, you know. You cannot simply say that the person is missing. That means he is dead, you know. Unless, unless there's a presumption. Uh, I, I know there's a presumption clause inside. Uh, evidence act uh, he says not been seen seven years uh, etc okay uh, but this is not a concern of discussion here so the body must be found you know for the prosecution to succeed on the case of murder okay so how do we know where the body was being hide that will become a challenge for police and also prosecution Okay, so section 27 make it very special uh, to allow uh, some sort of information that disclose where the body, murder weapon, okay, to substantiate the claims. Okay, this is admissible in court. Okay, uh, by realizing why we have this sort of proviso, I think it helps your memory. Uh, okay, mm. so... Uh, Again, this is the same case here, PP against. Uh, okay, so section uh, 27 allows so much information as distinctly relate to the facts uh, to be emissor. So this is Tan Hong, Tan Hong Sang against uh, Regina. The principle was applied in this case in determining the issue where the husband stabbed his knife with a knife and made a confession that he has stab her and thrown the body. So you can see, uh, section 27, virtually every single case law we have, we have a name here, is about murder. I stab my wife is not distinctly related to the discovery. Nothing to do with the body, isn't it? It's one element of crime here. It's, this one is what? This one is actors rare of the uh, that means this amount to confession uh, part of the element of uh, the crime you know okay I stab my wife okay so this one uh, you cannot simply admit under section 27 okay only this one thrown the body to the river that is facts discovery I hope you can uh, really understand how this uh, uh, this uh, section 27 works. Huh? Okay. Don't simply admit every single information because sometimes uh, the statement uh, is a compounded statement. Okay. There's a word N here. So you cannot just read it as just one information. You know? Actually, there's a two information. One and uh, the, the, the body is a two. Okay. Very important. Okay. Eh? Hmm. Only the part that thrown the body into the river is admissible. Okay. Same thing here, Pulukuri Kotaya, okay, against Emperor, King Emperor. Lah, okay. Uh, the statement I used to kill is not distinctly because it has no bearing on the discovery of fact. Therefore, you cannot use it under section 27. Okay, section 27, can okay, understand, huh? Voluntariness in section 27. Okay. In Francis Anthony Sami, again, uh, the court said that section 27 is an independent section. It is not same with section 24. So therefore, it is not subjected to voluntariness rule. Okay. Voluntariness no. Okay. So this is what it said in Francis Anthony Sami. And 
it's sort of um, this case actually sort of uh, agree with Gui Ching Ang against PP, uh, which held that information supply under Section Twenty Seven, which has been found to be involuntary, may be excluded in court in the exercise of discretion. Hmm. So, at the end of the day, uh, okay, at the end of the day, you must remember Section Twenty Seven itself is a highly special special proviso whereby it benefit who it benefit the prosecution so again the court has some room of fall back lah. that means to say it cannot say that sometimes you know let's say the accused is being forced to speak out some facts being written up then only the the words i hide my wife body in Sungai Melaka uh, was discovered. This is not fair, isn't it? So the court will evaluate the case-by-case -case basis. Uh. There's no conclusive ground yet. Okay. So eventually, uh, voluntariness in Section 27 is still subject to the discretion of court. Again, you must identify uh, the relationship between section 27 and section 113 sub rule 4. Uh, okay, very special. Uh. Okay, cool. I think, uh, yeah, we come to the end of the section. Uh, finally, we finish. Do I make you more confused or make you more in 